Hello! Welcome to another GDAL tutorial. We haven't really talked about vector data yet, so that is the purpose of this video. This is probably going to be the last video on how to use GDAL from the command line, because including this video I think I have more or less covered all the basic GDAL commands for both raster and vector data. And for any commands that I haven't explained yet, you know the deal. Just go to the GDAL webpage, find out the command that you need, provide the necessary inputs, and add options to your desire. Nevertheless, if there are still any GDAL programs that you really can't figure out by yourself, feel free to put that in the comments and maybe I will have a look at it. Else I would like to focus more on how to use GDAL in Python in future videos. Okay, but let's look at some vector data first and find out how to read, write and manipulate them using the simple feature library OGR, which is now part of GDAL. Here is a detailed overview of what we will do to the shapefiles that I've prepared today. First of all, we will use the function OGRinfo to get information on a vector dataset, like the projection information, its extent or the number of features that it stores. And then we will move to the function OGR to OGR, which has a lot of potential. We can use that to convert between different vector formats. We can also use that to make an attribute based selection to, for example, filter by feature ID. Then we will use OGR to OGR to change the projection of our shapefile. We will merge the shapefiles 1 and 2 because you can see the second one fits really nicely in there. I will show you how to calculate the area of each polygon. And then finally we will have a look at how to buffer vector layers using the command line and dissolve our merged dataset to a single big polygon. As you can already tell in this tutorial, I will focus on polygons, but most of what I do can be applied to shapefiles that have a point or line geometry as well. I have loaded both shapefiles into QGIS so we can frequently check our results, but all the processing will be done from our command line. Okay, I've navigated to our working directory and you can see we have both shapefiles stored in there. To list information on an OGR supported data source, we can use the function OGR info and then we provide a vector data set as an input, so for example, our first shapefile. If we just run OGR info like this, you can see it opens the shapefile, however, it does not really print out anything useful. To get information on the extent, projection, etc., we will need to add the option AL to list all features of all layers. Now you see this prints out all coordinates for every polygon in this layer. But up here we also find information on the projection information, I'm using UTM here, the number of features within our shapefile, its extent, and so on. You can imagine if you have a lot of features stored in your shapefile, this gets really, really long. So you might want a summary only for that you can use the SO option. And with this, we really only get the upper part, so geometry, feature count, and so on. And if you want information on a specific feature, you can select that using the attribute table and the option where. So for example, give me information on the polygon that has the feature ID 2. And here we go, now we only get the coordinates of this feature with ID 2. Now let's look at the function OGR to OGR. Its main purpose is to convert between different file formats, but there are a lot of options you can provide and they allow you to change the projection, select certain fields, execute SQL statements. We will explore a couple of these options in this tutorial. To, for example, convert a shapefile to a different file format, let's say KML, we would use OGR to OGR, then we name the out format, which would be KML in this case, and then, and this is different from GDAL commands, you will need to provide the output name first and then the input. So let's convert the first shapefile, so shape1 to KML, and our input is the first shapefile. And let's run this. And now you can see we have a shape.kml file right here. Remember the option where from OGR info, where we could select certain polygons based on their field attributes? Well, we can do that here as well. So let's only select polygons that have a feature ID that is greater than 3, for example. And create a new shapefile. And our input is the first shapefile. And now we have created a new shapefile that only stores the selected polygons. Now let's try to merge those shapefiles 1 and 2 and append the second shapefile to the first one. If we want to merge two shapefiles, they will have to be in the same projection. However, the second shapefile 
does not use UTM coordinates as you can see, so we will have to reproject that first. This can of course be done with OGR to OGR. And to change our spatial reference, we will use the option target spatial reference system. And here I will just put the EPSG code of the projection that I'm using for the first shape file. Let's call the output shape2 UTM and input is the second shape file. And check the projection again. And now you can see this has changed to UTM. Okay, to merge two shapefiles, we will copy either of the shapefiles that we have and then append the second one to it. So to make a copy, we use OGR to OGR. Let's copy the first one and call that merged shape and input is shape one. And now we have a merge shapefile that right now stores exactly the same features as the first shapefile. Now to add our second shapefile to the shapefile merged, we will need to use OGR to OGR with the options append and update. The shapefile that we want to update is merged and the shapefile that we want to append is shape2 UTM. And let's assign a new layer name and call that merged as well. And now if I load this merge shapefile to QGIS, you can see it now contains polygons both from our first and our second shapefile. Now a common thing that you might want to do is to compute the area of each of those polygons. Now you could of course do that by clicking many things in QGIS, but if you're processing many shapefiles or you want to reproduce your results in the future, it really makes more sense to put a bunch of GDAL commands in a shell script and run that from the command line. If, however, we want to compute the area of our polygons using the command line only, we will have to look at SQL statements. Let me tell you right away, I'm not too familiar with SQL, I'm not really using it a lot, so I'm most certainly not the best person to tell you anything about it, but I thought I would include that in this video, because you cannot get around it if you want to accomplish certain things, like for example compute the area, dissolve your polygons or buffer them. So in short, SQL is a language that allows you to communicate with databases and there are different dialects. GDAL supports two of them, first the OGR SQL dialect and the SQL SQLI dialect. Personally, I usually use the second one because with that I can run different spatial functions from Spatialite, which extends the SQLI database management system to support the data type geometry. So polygons, lines, points, any type of geospatial data. For computing the area, however, the OGR SQL dialect is faster because that's just one line of code. So to compute the area with this OGR SQL dialect, we again use OGR to OGR and then we provide an SQL statement. This has to go into quotation marks and then we start this statement using the keyword select to fetch different layer features. So in this case, the area of the polygons stored within the merge shapefile. To select the area right away, we can make use of different special fields that are defined within the OGR SQL dialect, so let's look at them. Here is a list of those built-in special fields, and you can see if we scroll down, we find OGR Geom Area, and this returns the area of the feature's geometry. So just what we want to get. So let's select this special field, OGR Geom Area. And this will create a new column in the attribute table of our output shapefile. And to give that column a nice name, we will rename the result of OGR gem area as area. And we want to get the surface area from the polygons in our merged shapefile. Okay, that should be the SQL statement that we need. We still need to set an output. So let's create a new shapefile, call that area, shape. And the input is our merged shapefile. Let's run this. And have a look. So now if we load this area shapefile and open the attribute table, you can see we now have a new field called area and this stores the area for each polygon in units of the projection, so in this case square meters. Let me quickly show you how you can use the SQLite dialect to compute the area as well because that is maybe a bit more intuitive. To do that we first have to add an empty column to our merged shapefile and we can do that using OGR info with the OGR SQL dialect. So our SQL statement will be alter the table of our merge shapefile and we want to add a column. And that column name is supposed to be area. And we also need to provide a type, so something like integer, string, double, 
In this case, let's take double to get a precise area measurement. Okay, and we want to alter the table of the merge shapefile. And if we now reload the merge shapefile to QJS and have a look at the attribute table, we have created a new field that does not store any data yet, so we have to add that. To do so, we will again use OGR info, and this time the SQLite dialect, which we will have to indicate because the OGR SQL dialect is the default. So dialect is SQLite, and the statement looks as follows. We want to update the merge shapefile and set the values of our area column to the result of one of those spatial functions that come with spatial light. Usually all of them start with st and the function that we need to compute the area is called st area. Input will be a special field of the SQLite dialect called geometry. And this geometry special field represents the geometry of our input feature, so the polygons of our merge shapefile. Okay, input is still the merge shapefile. And with that, we should be good to go. You can see with this SQL statement, we've now successfully filled the empty area column that we have created before. Okay, two more things I want to show you. Let's first of all try to dissolve all those polygons without using the function here in QJS, but using the command line only. This time again, we need OGR to OGR because we want to create a new shapefile. We will use the SQLite dialect because we need one of those spatial functions from Spatialite. And for the SQL statement, we again use the select keyword. And again, one of those spatial functions, this time it's called STUnion to dissolve all those polygons. By the way, SQL is not case sensitive, so you can write that all in lowercase. However, I personally find it more clear if I capitalize those keywords. So the input to this function is again the special field geometry. And we want the geometry from the merge shapefile. Let's call the result dissolved shapefile and the input is the merge shapefile. Now this has created a union of all the polygons within our merge shapefile. However, I would not call that union successful yet because you can see there are really small sliver polygons in here where we have added the second shapefile to the first one. A way to get rid of those sliver polygons and create a continuous dissolved surface is to buffer or shapefile by short distance and then dissolve it afterwards. SQLite also provides one of those spatial functions to buffer a geometry. So again, we use OGR to OGR, select the SQLite dialect. And the SQL statement looks similar to the one above. So select, and then the function that we need is, you've probably guessed it, called stbuffer. And the input here is again the geometry. And then we also need to provide a buffer distance. So for example, let's take 10 meters. We want the geometry from our merge shapefile. And let's call the output buffer. And the input is still merged. Run this. And now let's try to dissolve this buffer shapefile. So I'll just copy that command and put buffer here. And there. And now the new dissolved shapefile looks like this, so a smooth continuous surface. Perfect. Now this dissolved polygon is slightly bigger than the outline of the merge shapefile. If you want to go back to the original outlines, you could again take that dissolved shapefile and buffer it by a distance of minus 10 meters. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I will leave links to the Spatialite SQL functions reference list and the Spatialite cookbook in the description. As I said, I'm really no expert on this, but maybe you would like to become one. Alright, then have a good day and let's talk about Cheetah and Python soon.